Hey guys, let's land the hip. So there's three ways to do that. The first is your typical airplane style conventional landing where you come in for a shallow approach, touch down on wheels, come to a nice rolling stop, steer with your anti-torque pedals. You can follow any of the same airfield patterns that you might use in an airplane, so whether you're coming in for a left or right base, or an overhead brake, or simulated carrier landing, whatever you want to do. But the idea is the same, you're going to come in from fairly shallow, nice slow descent rate, one to two meters per second would be awesome, two to three is fine, and just set down on your wheels and come to a rolling stop. The second one, when you don't have a whole runway available to you, and the most common one, will be a more steep approach into a ground effect hover, and then you'll set down. And this is perfect for landing on a FARP, or in a field that's wide open, or anywhere you, where you need a precise, precision kind of landing, and you don't have a whole ton of room or a nice smooth flat surface like a runway to work with. So that's what you'll end up doing most of the time. And then finally, the one that you'd like to avoid when you can, but you'll be forced into from time to time, is a performance or vertical landing where there just isn't any room to come in forward. You just have to come in over top, into, enter a hover, and then lower yourself straight down. So we're entering a right base here to come in and land. We're just going to do a nice conventional shallow landing here onto wheels. And this is nice when you've got a lot of weight and you can take advantage of this surface being here, the nice long runway. Turn on the final. You don't need a lot of room to stop. If you want to do this, if you want to come in for your final over top of the runway, you'll have plenty of room to stop. The helicopter can slow itself down really nicely. So once we're lined up here, you want to keep an eye on your VVI. Now's a good time to descend if you need to, because you're moving fast, you're moving forward, you're not going to risk VRS, most likely. Still try to keep your descent rate lower than, like, below 5 meters per second. So I'm around three right now, which is fine. I'll just try to keep it lined up. As we come down, we'll reduce our collective further, flare just a bit. And we're down. Now we can steer with our anti-torque pedals, reduce our collective all the way. Pull some aft cyclic to level out the main rotor disc, and when we're ready, apply some light brakes. And we should slow ourselves right down. Nice and easy. One nice thing about this approach style is that you can come in fast enough for your landing that you never lose effective translational lift, and you never have to deal with the effects of transverse flow at low speeds where it would tend to drift to the left. But I do want to mention that those concepts do apply if you let yourself get slow enough, and we'll probably see that in the next landing. Alright, so what we're going to do is start with a just a flyby of the landing zone and have a look. Normally we would land into the wind, whatever direction that might be, and that would determine our type of landing. But today there's no wind, so we can do whatever the terrain allows for. So if we fly over here, there is a landing pad just up there to the left of the smoke. And it looks like our best approach is going to be from across that field. So let's head out into the water a bit here and then turn around and come back. Now our approach speed should be about 120 kilometers per hour with a descent rate of 1 to 2 meters per second. And then as we get close, over the last set of trees or so, um, then we want to slow down, actually a little before that, we want to slow down to 60 kilometers per hour. And we can increase our descent rate if needed. We want to keep it as shallow as possible, but it depends on what the terrain will allow for. And then if we hold at 60 kilometers an hour, we maintain effective translational lift. And that's important because it keeps us out of vortex ring state. It minimizes the risk of it. Uh, you'll start to feel a little bit of buffeting uh, from transverse flow around that speed. Uh, if you start to feel that, good idea to nose down just a little bit, add a little more collective. 
and try to stay above that. Once we get just over top of the beginning of the threshold or the threshold of our landing pad, a whole lot happens kind of all at once. So we're going to lean back on what's an aft cyclic to bleed off what's left of our airspeed. And at the same time, we're going to need to reduce our collective so that we don't climb. But right after that, we're going to lose effective translational lift and enter vortex ring state if we haven't already compensated by adding more and a significant amount of collective. So what this looks like is you lean back on the cyclic, you slow down, you reduce your collective to not climb, and then within a second, you're going to be adding a significant amount of collective back and then bringing the nose down with forward cyclic to stop yourself from then turning around and flying backwards. And if you time everything just right, you should enter a hover. There's also going to be some anti-torque input because the nose is going to want to twist. And there's just a lot to manage all at once. Alright, so I'm coming in fast, so I'm going to reduce my collective and lean back on half cyclic. Try to reduce my speed down to about 120. Now we're going to put on half speed here and do this in slow motion. So we want about 120 kph, which we've got down there. We're a little fast with slowing. We want 1 to 2 meters per second descent, which we have. And we want to just fly in towards our red smoke. So once we hit about 120, we can bring the nose down, add some collective to try to stay in the air. And we want to hold roughly that. Our descent, we're going to minimize that a little because we're getting low. We'll keep the speed at 120. Now, as we get close within visual range across the field or so of that landing pad, we're going to reduce our speed to 60 kph. So we're going to cut it in half. We'll do that with aft cyclic and reduced collective. We're going to try to hold that, which keeps us in effective translational lift, or with effective translational lift, as long as possible, because as soon as we lose that, we risk vortex ring state. And we really don't want to risk that if we don't have to, and we don't want to have to hover taxi if we don't have to. So we're getting a little low. I'm going to add some collective, try to keep myself above the treetops. We're still keeping 120 kph. Now we're getting close, so the landing pad is on the other side of those trees over there. We should be coming in from that gap in the trees probably, but this will give us a, a steeper approach, which is good for this demonstration. Keep going, we've got 120 kph. We're climbing a little, but that's okay. We've got trees in front of us. All right, so there's the pad. So I'm gonna start slowing. I'm reducing my collective. I'm hitting aft cyclic. I wanna to slow to 60 kph rather quickly. And keep that one meter per second descent. Now I'm adding collectives to control that uh, descent rate. Now I'm at about 70 and there's some buffeting, so nose down, add collective to maintain control descent. I want to hold about 60 kph. Here we come. And just as we get to about the threshold of this landing pad, Lean back on the cyclic to bleed off our airspeed, reduce collective to stop the climb, and then as we come down in airspeed, add a significant amount of collective, right anti-torque pedal, keep the nose pointed straight from all the extra engine torque, and then nose back down, and we can slowly reduce our collective again. We can take stock of where this put us. We're back a little bit, we need to come forward. You can see our tail end's going to hang off the landing pad if we don't, but not bad. 
get ourselves into a stable hover where we're happy. And then we set down. Zoom speed to normal here. All right, so here we are again. We're just lining up with that green smoke, reducing our altitude a bit, and reducing our airspeed down to 120. With this much airspeed, it's safe to have a higher descent rate. You're not going to get into vortex ring state. But once you get below 100, kilometers per hour, I'm really careful with my descent rate. So anyway, we're a little, uh, a little slow, so nose down, add some collective, try to get that speed up to 120. Keep the nose pointed where we want it, 110 or so here, and then 20, there we go. Alright, so we're basically within range. I know where the landing pad is, so I'm going to start slowing down to 60. Aft cyclic, reduce collective. And then as the speed comes down, we reverse both of those, so uh, reduce our aft cyclic and add some collective to stay in the air. Here's our landing pad in front of us. We're getting a little slow. There we go, okay. Try to keep that buffeting away. That's your sign you're slowing down too much. And just as we cross the threshold, lead off the airspeed, counter VRS before it happens, and then nose down so we don't start flying backwards. And we enter a nice little hover here over top of the landing pad. And when we're ready, we set down. And there's your precision landing. So this is again what you'll do the most common, most commonly. Most of the time that's what you'll do. Words. Okay, so our last kind of landing is a vertical or performance landing, which you'll do when you have no other choice, when the terrain does not allow for you to come in with any forward movement. And you really want to avoid this if you can, because it makes it so much easier to enter VRS, to fall out of the sky, but sometimes it will be necessary. So the approach idea is very similar to the last one. We come in, um, we keep ETL, effective translational lift, as long as we can, and then once we get close to our LZ, we lead off the rest of our speed and transition into a hover, just this time at a higher altitude, out of ground effect. And then we'll uh, position ourselves where we feel it is best, and then just lower ourselves down at the slowest possible descent rate that we can manage. And the heavier you are, the slower you're going to want to keep this, because you will very quickly slip into VRS. So we're going to head over towards that white smoke. That's the clearing we're going to land in. And the same idea kind of applies. You really want to do a flyover and get a good feel for what our LZ looks like, what our best approach angle is, which will be into the wind if there is any, but in this case there isn't. We can decide whatever gives us the most room. So we're just going to do a little pass here. I'm going to try to slow down a little bit. And try to get an idea of what's here. Now I will often enter a hover right before the landing site, so I'm kind of doing that a bit slow now. So there's the field right down there on the inside of those trees. We're going to try to land in that in front of the white smoke. The downside is I don't want to fly through the smoke because I'll lose my visibility. So maybe we'll turn and face the smoke and do it that way. So if we turn... Same idea as before. We're going to bleed off our airspeed. We try to keep effective translational lift here, 60 kph, as 
as long as we can, get us nice and close. And then we'll bleed off the rest and add some collective to stay out of VRS and enter a hover. Now from here, we can position ourselves where we need to be. We can just kind of get ourselves over the trees, remembering that the hip is a very long helicopter, your tail sticks out, and you're sitting way in the front. Your tail sticks out a long way behind you, you really want to make sure that you're going to clear these trees. So we're going to get as close to that white smoke as I'm comfortable with, and then start to reduce our altitude. One to two meters per second, preferably one. Keep your nose pointed where you want with the anti-torque pedals. And then settle down slowly, very slowly. See, already I'm descending too quickly. I'm just about to enter VRS. So you're going to need a fair amount of collective. You're going to have to manage it constantly. You don't want to climb. You want to keep a steady descent rate. One meter per second. Keep your nose pointed in one direction, try not to drift, and just slowly bring yourself down, reduce collective a little by little, just position as needed, now we've got some ground effect under us here, picking up dust. Once we're a few meters off the ground, reduce our collective a bit more to finish settling down. And we're down. So let's hop out and have a look here. So this is a pretty tight LZ. Like you can see how close these trees are to my rotor blades. Um, I'm not sure how many pilots in real life would risk this kind of landing if they didn't have some absolute need to do it, but it gives you an idea of what is possible. And in a location where really you couldn't come in here with much of any forward flight, maybe over these trees into a hover. But now imagine these are uh, apartment buildings, you know? Imagine you're in a downtown area and you need to airlift somebody out and these trees are double the height that are buildings that are two or three times taller than this. There's no way you're coming in with any forward motion. You're just going to have to enter a hover and then bring yourself straight down. This is where having the extra crew, the extra eyes would be helpful. But in DCS, it's basically just you. So, you know, practice your hovers in and out of those. Try to get yourself lined up. Make sure you're far enough forward that your tail isn't going to strike anything and then just bring it down as slowly as you possibly can. And that's it. So I hope all that made sense. We covered the three different, three main kinds of landings that you'll do in the helicopter and the hip. There's your traditional rolling landing like an airplane would do. There's a steeper descent into a hover landing, which is used for precision landings on FARPs and landing pads. And then there's your performance or vertical landing. So three kinds of landings to counter the three kinds of takeoffs. Hope that made sense. If I missed something or got something wrong, which I'm sure I did, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. And otherwise, I'll catch you for the next video. Thanks.